This free flight training tip is brought to you by Fourth Flight, the leading producer of aviation apps for the iPhone and the iPad. Check them out at fourflight.com. It is intuitive to most pilots that when they are cruising at higher altitudes, say 8,000 feet for example, that they are operating in air that is less dense. Engines produce partial power, the propeller has less of a bite on the air, and the overall performance is decreased. It is always wise, but further, it's critical to take into account the combined effect of pressure and temperature when arriving or departing airports at higher elevations. An airport that is 5,900 feet MSL, for example, might have an equivalent density altitude of 8,000 feet if there is low pressure in the area and the temperature is high. The airplane knows no difference. Density altitude is used to help predict performance. The density is what it is, and the true altitude cannot be used to measure how the airplane and its engine will react in reduced barometric pressures. When the molecules of air are spread apart, as they are in reduced barometric pressures, the airplane will require a higher true airspeed to achieve the appropriate indicated speeds for takeoff and landing. You will remember to always fly your indicated airspeeds. It is your lifeblood as it represents the actual number of molecules flowing over the wings and therefore keeping you airborne. That's true regardless of sight picture and regardless of performance. You will have higher ground speeds and require more runway, but the indicated speeds won't change. That's precisely why it's important to be aware of your density altitude. Because the indicated speeds don't change, it's everything else that does. Your true airspeed and the resulting ground speed will change. Flight plan carefully when arriving or departing an airport in hot weather, at high altitudes, or most challenging of all, when both conditions are present. <laughs>